I can't, I can't yes. just say, I, I feel the Lord here. I feel Him at home. I feel yes. Him in my car. Amen. He's with me wherever yes. I go. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I thank God for His Spirit, hallelujah, that has been so evident in my life. And I don't want to forget to thank Him and to praise Him for what He's done. Praise the Lord. He's been ever good. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 4. Praise the Lord. And it says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid. And the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians and the astrologers and the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them. But they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the vision of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord. For your spirit divine. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, and we ask for your power. We ask for your spirit, Lord, to come in and dwell amongst us tonight. Send your spirit down in our lives, Lord. And God, I just pray that your glory and your fire, God, and your power, Lord, would flow. And most of all, your spirit divine would come down upon us, Lord. I pray, Lord, have your way. And Lord, I pray that you would use me, anoint your servant. And Lord, let my words be anointed of you, God. And Lord, let it go forth with power, demonstrating the power of the Holy Ghost, I pray. Pray. And Lord, I pray tonight if there's one, God, that needs to be filled with your spirit, I pray that tonight will be their night. Yes. They will receive that power from on high. They will have that power of the Holy Ghost. And God, you will do great things in our lives, yes. Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 I was reading this scripture and it's, it's something how when you look at, you know, certain scriptures in the Bible and during the Bible times, I know a lot of times when you read certain things, it's a little bit different than what we do today. But really when it's all said and done, uh, the, as the scripture says, there's really nothing new under the sun. Uh, we still face uh, certain things, you know, that these people face. Uh, I know that, you know, just as Nebuchadnezzar had this dream and this dream bothered him but uh, he called it says in this scripture that he called for the magicians and he called for the astrologers and he called for the soothsayers uh, I want you to know uh, we're living in a nation we're living in a land we're living in a world they're still doing the same thing they're still calling on things that will not give them the answer but I am thankful that there are men and women of God that are led by the power of the Holy Spirit and God can reveal His Spirit unto us and let His power go forth through our lives so that they will see the difference. Amen. Amen. I want this world to see the difference in me compared to those that are serving other gods uh, that are serving
serving other powers. Uh, a lot of people will say, well, I don't believe in that. Well, I want you to know there are other powers in the world. I just want you to know that I serve the most high power. His name is Jesus Christ. Uh, he put this thing in motion and he's going to finish it. Hallelujah. And I am thankful that in this scripture we can get a demonstration of what it is to have the spirit of the holy God. Hallelujah. I don't want any spirit. I don't want just some devil coming my way. I don't want to lean on uh, what the spirit of this world has to offer, but I want to lean on the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Spirit. And if there's one thing, people should know the difference in your life that you have the Holy Spirit in your life, in your Christian walk with the Lord. And it's something how, it, you know, I look at this scripture and what comes to my memory is that uh, for some reason Nebuchadnezzar called on the magicians and he called on all those uh, artificial ones instead of realizing where the true power was. It's a demonstration to us tonight that we don't need to lean on the arm of flesh. We don't need to go after the things of this world because they don't have the answer. But I am thankful tonight that I have a God that hears my prayers uh, and I have a God that has filled me with the power of the Holy Spirit and He will reveal it to you tonight and He will give you the victory. Amen. Thank, you, Thank the Lord. Amen. Now, you know, something how, you know, there was those group. You know, it's something how in the scripture it says that Daniel wasn't really associated with these magicians and these astrologers if you look in the scriptures because right here in verse 8 it says but at last Daniel came in before me. Now I don't know the reasons why. Maybe those magicians didn't want Daniel in their group or maybe Daniel didn't want to be associated with them. I want you to know I want to be associated with people of God. I I want to be around the righteous. I, I want to be about uh, the redeemed. I don't want to be a part of this world, but I want to have communication with the power of God and with believers that are in agreement with me. Yes. Amen? Because yes. I want you to know that this world will weigh you down. This world will bring you heartache. This world is full of sin. It's full of destruction. We've got to turn to the Most High God. We've got to turn to the God who is able to deliver us, who is able to fill us up and to give us just what we need. Yeah. There's one true thing we can know tonight that King Nebuchadnezzar saw the difference in Daniel. He saw that the hand of, the, of God was on his life. That there was a difference in the magicians and the astrologers that came in first. But he saw a difference in Daniel. I want you to know people are looking at you and I hope that they see a difference. I hope that they're seeing the light. And most of all, I hope that they are seeing the power of the Holy Spirit being demonstrated in your life. Amen. I want people to see the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. I want the power of the Holy Spirit to be in operation in this church. I want you to be filled up. I want you to have the victory. Thank God for Jesus who set us free. Hallelujah. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Yeah. Everyone that has been saved and born again it says in Romans 8 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And so be that the Spirit of God dwell now. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. 
That means once you receive Jesus Christ, there is an indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. But I want you to know there is a difference in just the Spirit of God resting on you and having the power of the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where you begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I want you to know this was before the time of the power of the Holy Spirit uh, when Pentecost came. But there's one thing to know. There should, first of all, be a line drawn in the sand and there should be a, a light shining bright in your life that you have committed your all to the Lord. Amen. And then second of all, you should be desiring to be filled with the power of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? amen. I'll wake you up tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. I was just sharing with Matthias, you know, because uh, I, I will say there's a times where, you know, uh, I want you to know I, I take Full, uh, I take full responsibility and I take it very seriously when I prepare the Word of God for you. Yes. I know there are times where the power of God, thank God for the Holy Ghost that comes down and hallelujah, He's the one that takes control. Praise yeah, the Lord. Yeah, yeah. But I was sharing with Shannon the other the other day and I was saying, boy, it's just it's just rough. I'm having a rough time. And he was, you know, out and about and he, he texted me and he wrote, he wrote, Bubba, you need to ride those waves, Bubba. You need to ride those waves. Now you might say, Well, what in the world is that? I don't know what that means. Well, I was trying to share with Matthias a little bit this today because right, I know it was probably not long after I met Shannon. It wasn't that long, maybe a couple years. We were at his house and we were going through some cassette tapes, some old cassette tapes. He had some to where he, he even had ones where he would get in there as a little kid and he was recording himself and pretending like he was a DJ. DJ, and but here we found a cassette tape that was his grand. He called her grandmommy. That was Sam's mom, and I never knew the woman. She had already been gone. She already gone on to be with the Lord. She struggled. She had MS most of her life. She struggled with multiple sclerosis. And I never met the woman in my entire life. But what she would do, because she lived all the way down in Virginia, she didn't get to see her grandchildren that, as much. She didn't get to see her family as much. And she would take little cassette tapes and she would talk on them to the family. And she would sing songs, um, worship songs, little courses, all kinds of things. It was almost like she was on there having a little church service, you know, partially. And we put that cassette tape in and I, I never knew her before. But she would go down through the line and one by one she would bring up the kids. And she would, you know, focus on each child. And then she would come to, to uh, Sam and Norma, and if you don't know, well, you know now, Sam's uh, nickname, it was Bubba when he was down in Virginia, and that's what they called him. But at that time, he was pastoring, and he was pastoring a church, and she got in there, and she would encourage him, and I mean, you could just feel the presence of the Lord on that on that cassette tape, her just reaching out and singing praises unto God and she got to Sam and she encouraged him and she said, I know there's times when it's tough but she said when you get into that pulpit, she said, Bubba just ride those waves hallelujah and sometimes that's what we've got to do we've got to ride those waves in the Holy Ghost Stuff. We've got to know that it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. It's by my spirit. I was reading in the book of Acts where Paul comes across. You can turn there if you want. 
in Acts 19. It says that he came across the passed through the upper coast and came into Ephesus and he found certain disciples there. And I want you to know this was way after Pentecost. This was way after the upper room where they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. But it says here, when Paul came through finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Oh, I want you to know we're living in that world today. We're living in a world where our young people don't have a clue what it is to hear someone speak in other tongues. They don't know what it is to get in the prayer closet and use their prayer language and to pray in the Holy Ghost. I want you to know they've never heard it. They've never been around it. But I truly believe, just as Paul, I'm going to declare it to you. Have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Because yes. if there's one thing we need, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. With the initial evidence of speaking with other tongues. It gives us power. It gives us, hallelujah, the power that we need to go through this life, to face the things, to tear down the walls of the enemy, to destroy the strongholds of Satan. I want you to know uh, when you receive that power, you have all that you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There, you know, made me think when I see him, Matthias. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful, you know, for him. And I, I pray that God's spirit will come on his life. Amen. Thank you. I'm thankful he helps me, you know. Uh, you know, when Shannon's away or when he's here or whatever, I want you to know he's a blessing here. Amen. And I thank God for him. But it kind of brought me back to a little memory. And there was probably plenty of them. So it wasn't something that was... There's one thing to know. That it's not foreign to him about the Holy Ghost. It might be foreign to the friends that he hangs around. It might be foreign to the buddies maybe that down the road. But I want you to know the Holy Ghost is not foreign to him because he saw it demonstrated in this church and he saw it demonstrated in Shannon and I's life. Praise God. There would be times, you know, as a little boy, the Holy Ghost would hit me. I remember right there and probably where Doug was sitting and he was just a little boy and I mean the Holy Ghost just hit me. I mean, I just began to weep and I mean, I was just under the glory. And I could tell it didn't scare him. It, it did. It, he just. It was almost like this sweet spirit came down on him. And I want you to know, he was a little rascal when he was little. <laughs> <laughs> he was like a little Dennis the Menace. <laughs> But it was something how when any time that happened, I remember one time he shoved little tissues up under because I was bent down and he, he was handing me tissue. I want you to know he was three or four years old. The power of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't need to be foreign to our children. I'm praying one day that these kids, if the parents can't get it, let the little children be filled. Let the Holy Ghost hit them and they can change the world and they will make a difference in the next generation Amen. hallelujah that's what we need I was just reading in a devotion and here the devotion was from Paul Crouch and we all know who Paul Crouch was he was the one founder of TBN and I, you know, I know some people will put them down and say anything, all the things, but boy, can I tell a difference since he's gone. Amen. <laughs> yes. 
They might have had some crazy hairdos or whatever. But thank God I could tell the difference. I can see that there is a change in the air. But I was reading how he said his little, his little grandma, he was in church. He was about 14 years old. And he said his grandma came to him. And her name was Agnes Crouch. And she came to him and she pleaded with him. She said, he goes, he, she even made me kneel down. She goes, you got got to get this Holy Ghost in your life. You've got to be filled. Oh, it will change you and it'll make you powerful and it'll make you to reach out and to touch lives. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said at the time he, he couldn't understand what she was expressing until one night the Holy Ghost came down on him and he said he began to speak with other tongues and the Holy Ghost filled him up to overflow. I want you to know that's what we need. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Have you been filled since you believed? Have you been filled? It says that Paul went over. He realized these disciples were devout. They had surrendered their lives. They had received Jesus Christ. You've got to be saved and born again before you can be filled. And, and, and it says that he went over and he laid his hands on them and they began to speak with other tongues and the Holy Ghost filled them up and gave them power. And I know they went out conquering the world for Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But now we're living in a new world. We're living in a new day. We're living in a day where it seems okay to mix in with the world. It's okay to, you know, to bang out to your music, uh, to go out to this place and to that place. Uh, I want you to know when the Holy Ghost fills you up, you're not going to want to desire one of those things. Uh, you're going to want to desire more of His love, more of His power, and more of His Spirit in your life. And we also got a new church that thinks it's okay to take a little sip and to have a little drink. I want you to know that's not what uh, the times in these scriptures are talking about. What does it say in Ephesians? In Ephesians chapter 5, 18, it says, Be not drunk with wine where in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to your and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. I want you to know when the Holy Ghost comes on you, you're going to want to sing. You're going to want to praise just as Elma did tonight. She sang praises. She sang glory to her Savior. When Jesus fills you up with that power, you're not going to be quiet, but you're going to let it ring forth in your life. Jesus. And you're not going to want no part of what the world has to offer because you know that it's so artificial and it only satisfies for a moment and then it leaves you high and dry. But Jesus... He fills you up to overflow. He gives you that glory and He gives you that power. That's what we need to have. We need to have a passion and a power and a presence in our lives to where we want to say, I've received it and now, hallelujah, I want my brother and I want my sister to be filled. I want everyone, just as Paul said, he wasn't going to let them go by, but he had to ask the question, have ye received the power since ye believed. Yes. It may, always makes me think of, I might not tell it exactly right because I know Don Trotz tells it so funny. Um, but he said he was in a church service one night with his buddies, his, his brothers and his 
friends. Now we all know who Don Trotz. He was the one supposed to come to our camp meeting, but he's been here plenty of times, preached revivals, and 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 Christina even got marvelously saved under his ministry here when we had revival services. But I always like how he tells the night where they said that you know, come on up and you get you get this touch from God. And he says, as soon as he started, you know, to think about going, he, he turned to his brother and he turned to his, are you going to go? Are you going to go with me? And they all shook their head. Yeah, we'll go with you. And he says as they were getting out of the aisle, he said all of a sudden they, you know, back then they meant business. They got you, you know, there was brothers and sisters right there to get you down the aisle. They were ready to take you down so that you get the fire. And he said, uh, all of a sudden, he just realized there was a bunch of people behind him taking him to the altar. He's wondering, where is his brothers are? Where's his friends? And he turns around and he looks back in the back and they're waving <laughs> at him. <laughs> And he said that all of a sudden it didn't matter anymore. Those men and women of God that were filled with the Holy Ghost began to lay their hands on him. Oh, and he received that Holy Ghost. He received Jesus. He was filled up with overflow. Hallelujah. See, that's what we need in the world today. We need to let that people will see that we have the Spirit of the Holy God. That we have this new wine. Hallelujah. We don't want the artificial wine. We want the new wine that has filled us up to overflow and will give us the victory to conquer every storm, every battle, every situation that comes our way. Because I want you to know if you got that power, if you've been filled to overflow, hallelujah, God wants to put you you to use. He wants to use you. He wants you to re for you to reach out and to touch other lives so that there will be more come in and receive of this wonderful blessing. This wonderful gift from the Lord. I want that gift in my life and I truly believe that it's not just a one time event but the scriptures talks about it being a repeated being filled over and over. Because see, I don't Amen. think we can ever get enough Amen. of His presence Amen. and His glory. And especially the Spirit of the Holy God. Hallelujah. Amen. His Spirit will rest on our lives and the world will see the difference. Hallelujah. Can you say amen tonight? Amen. amen. Let's stand in the house of the Lord.